Hey everyone, Jeff Hoffman here from the UF Weather Center tracking this major storm developing. And I'm going to talk about a severe weather risk tonight, uh, late tonight in the Florida Panhandle. And then here in North Central Florida, we have a low risk of a tornado and maybe some wind damage. You know, we've had three F2 tornadoes in the state in a span of eight days earlier this month. And prior to that, it took seven years for three F2s. Um, we get more tornadoes in El Nino winters and they're stronger. We've already seen evidence of that. That's why we're a little proactive, if you will, about getting the word out uh, regarding this threat. You have forecaster Amanda Holly. She's holding the camera. I'm going to flip the camera onto her here in just a minute. She's also tracking some bitter cold wind chills headed in for the weekend. But first, I want to talk about this storm and it's a doozy. Check out um, the animation of this water vapor. Look at the spin developing here. Multiple areas of spin earlier on. Now it's all consolidating into one big storm system. And uh, I want to first talk about the complexity of the storm system. We've got the polar jet, the subtropical jet, and a low pressure center that's going to bring this all together. All this warm, humid air. Uh, I could draw a better arrow, couldn't I? Um, Try to do two things at once here. All this warm, humid air is going to move up ahead of the storm, and the cold air is going to tap into it, and there's going to be that collision, and there's already some severe weather taking place in parts of Louisiana. I wanted to show you at the time of this taping, we already have some pretty big storms. Let me put this into motion. Some pretty big storms. I know it's flashing a bit there, but you can see lined up from Jackson, Mississippi to uh, Baton Rouge, and let me overlay the uh, warnings here for you um, as I bring the uh, radar to a halt. Uh, we've had some uh, tornado warnings, uh, and even at this moment, those purple uh, or pink polygons or tornado warnings in central and southern Mississippi and a couple here in northeast Louisiana and uh, some severe thunderstorm warnings as well. Let me turn the radar off for you, and we're going to show you where these storms are going with a, uh, what we call this the high resolution uh, model, and it's basically a prediction of where the cells will be going here in the future, and I'm going to advance it to 6 a.m. Notice it's 4, 6 o'clock. This is going to be moving through Pensacola. And there's a tornado risk along this squall line. And here it is at 6 a.m. near Tallahassee. Let me move the map over. You can see that'll be nearing our Nature Coast counties uh, right before sunrise on Friday morning. So this is a real risk. Uh, the storms will probably weaken just a bit. I'm going to explain this in just a minute. We are, uh, let's look up at the clock there, Amanda. We are just about a minute and a half away from a live weather on the sixes. We're going to be live tomorrow morning, Friday morning, 7 to 9 a.m. We'll have updates hourly, or every 10 minutes rather, uh, for several hours after that as these thunderstorms roll in. And so I just want to remind you of that on WRUF TV. You can stream that live at ufweather.org. Hey, let me take that from you, Amanda, because I want to. I want you to tell me about how uh, you're looking at the wind chills. I know you've been over here working hard on this uh, winter weather moving in this weekend. Check it out. Yeah, I've been ranking the numbers here. It is going to be a very cold Saturday. We're going to have wind chills only in the 30s all day long. We only need a five mile per hour wind to give a wind chill and our winds are going to be much higher than that. I'll give you the exact numbers here in that weather cast, but it's going to be, it's going to probably be the coldest day of the season. We are talking highs in the mid 40s for oh. North Central Florida. Yeah, so not as cold as the freezes in the overnight hours, right. but uh, yeah, I don't like the sound of that. The blustery winds for sure. The blustery conditions for yeah. Saturday. All right, we're all right, thank you, Keith. Keith just told me in my ear that we're 30 seconds away. We're going to check our microphones to make sure they're on. Uh, you're looking at our UF Weather Center here, and we're about 20 seconds away from uh, weather on the sixes. Don't forget, you'll be able to see this live. Uh, I'm going to set the camera right here so you can kind of see what we're doing. Live tomorrow morning, 7 to 9 a.m., and Amanda's going to get ready. She's going to be talking about the cold air, and here in about five seconds, we're going to be up. Go ahead, Keith. The risk for severe weather, including an isolated tornado, exists here in North Florida on your Friday morning, and we're tracking it from the UF Weather Center. Jeff Hoffman here. I'll be joined alongside with UF forecaster Amanda Holly shortly uh, for an update on the cold that will follow this storm system. But first, let's get to the storm itself, and it is developing. What a monster this is going to be for the mid-Atlantic states. Uh, in some locations, could be a historic snowstorm. You've got the polar jet with a little dip in it there across Texas and Louisiana. The subtropical jet, it's been enhanced to this winter because of our El Nino. We've been talking about that for it seems like forever. Low pressures developing in northeast Texas. It's going to tap into this warm, juicy air moving north. It's going to pull down this cold Canadian air on the backside of it. And you got that collision zone taking place right now with severe weather forming in the mid south. Now there 
is a complex situation about to unfold on Friday. This storm will strengthen as it heads toward Atlanta, but then there's going to be a transfer of energy to a new system developing over the warm waters of the western Atlantic and the Gulf Stream. And then that's the one that's going to move up the East Coast and really hammer the mid-Atlantic states with the winter weather. When this transfer takes place, it sometimes disrupts the flow of that warm, humid air in front of the storm. So the severe risk is lower in the peninsula than it is in the panhandle, but it's certainly something we don't need to take lightly considering what has happened across the state earlier this month. The risk, there it is, midnight to 6 a.m. in the panhandle, approaching the Nature Coast counties just after daybreak. Let me zoom in for you and you can see the risk is highest over in Levy and Dixie counties of 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then the risks still exist along the I-75 corridor, 10 to 12, uh, probably ending by 2 o'clock on Friday afternoon. Here it is hour by hour on Future Track. Notice the time at the top of your screen. There it is, Cedar Key, 9 o'clock, Gainesville, Ocala, Crystal River. Right now our best estimate is 10 to 12, crossing the I-75 corridor on Friday. Now's the time to download our free mobile app called Florida Storms. You can also follow us or like us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with the very latest on Friday morning. Now Amanda's been tracking the cold. Amanda, we don't really want to see these numbers this weekend. We don't want to see these numbers, Jeff, and especially if you're from Florida. It's going to be downright cold. If you're heading out to the bars on Friday night, it is already going to feel like the upper 30s. If you wake up earlier on Saturday morning feeling like below freezing, that's how strong these winds are going to be. 30 degrees is what it's going to feel like mid 20s up near the I-10 corridor. If you are a late sleeper, you're still not going to get out of this cold. 39 degrees is what it's going to feel like right around 3 o'clock. These wind chills are not going to get out of the 30 degree range for the entire afternoon on Saturday. 47 is our actual high, but it's certainly not going to feel anything like that for the entire afternoon for Saturday. The cold doesn't last long. We do have a freeze possible for your Sunday morning, but check it out. Temperatures rebound nicely back to seasonal for Monday. Jeff. All right, thanks, Amanda. We will be here once again throughout the night. I'll be keeping our partner stations up to date on the Florida Public Radio Emergency Network Storm Center. And uh, we'll be here bright and early with your mornings live 7 to 9 a.m. And don't forget to follow us or like us on our social media accounts. How about that? How'd you do, Amanda? Good. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you, you had to deliver the bad news of the cold. Yeah. So if I'm going to want to go out, because I know I'm, we're going to, you know, this is going to be a rough uh, few hours for us tomorrow. <laughs> Long shift ahead, but uh, definitely going to need the winter coats. Uh, Big winter coats. Yeah, and even Saturday. I'm going to sleep in, maybe get up around noon, 1 o'clock, head outside, think it's going to be nice and warm, the sun's going to be out. Not the case. No. All right. All right, folks, uh, thanks for uh, joining us. And um, that's a look behind the scenes here at the UF Weather Center. We're going to, of course, uh, be live again starting at 7 a.m. with your weather on the sixes.